Okay, uh, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers around the globe. Uh, thank you for joining. Delighted to introduce Dr. Astrid Wines today to uh, speak on minimal change disease reimagining. Um, I'm honored to be here today and share some really exciting research we've done. Most of you probably familiar with it already, but it's always fun to talk about it and take everybody through the journey that we've been through to understand this really interesting disease called minimal change disease. And my talk today is entitled Minimal Change Disease Reimagined because I hope at the end of the talk, you will agree with me that we need to look at this disease in a very different way from what we used to. Okay. So I always start out my talks with a patient who has inspired my research since I really pride myself and my lab. Um, we pride ourselves in, in looking at uh, disease pathogenesis inspired by diagnostic observations. We really don't like research that is just, you know, fun, uh, founded in uh, mouse models or cell line observations or your, you know, favorite protein. What we really want to do is understand disease mechanisms coming from the patients and coming from the patient's biopsies and tissues. And this is really how this all started out. Um, this was a, a 61 year old Caucasian female. She had a history of congestive heart failure, presented with a two month history of worsening edema in spite of increased diuretic treatment. Um, she was on Lasix, like all of those patients are usually. And uh, often these histories are quite long, especially in adults. Uh, where they develop this edema and it is blamed on the heart failure instead of looking at the urine to figure out if maybe this patient might have proteinuria. Uh, she also reported a 20 pound weight gain along with that edema, mild shortness of breath, and she didn't have any macroscopic hematuria. She also had recently suffered from a lower extremity ulcer that is currently healed. So you see there's quite a few reasons, possible reasons why this patient might have um, kidney disease. She had obviously uh, some kind of vasculopathy with congestive heart failure. She also had an ulcer on her, on her leg um, and there might be other reasons too. So on physical examination, she weighed about 250 pounds. Uh, she had uh, clear lungs, mild heart murmur, two plus pitting edema of her lower extremities, and she still had some cellulitis on her lower extremity. She was on uh, the following medications, acetaminophen, vitamin D3, calcium carbonate, spironolactone, and lorazepam. And she had a slightly elevated serum creatinine of 1.5 with a baseline of 1. Uh, low serum albumin of two, hyperlipidemia, and the urinalysis showed three plus, blood, uh, three plus protein and one plus blood. And uh, that prompted a spot urine uh, protein, protein over creatinine ratio, which was 14 grams per gram creatinine. So obviously this patient presented with a full nephrotic syndrome um, and that in, in turn then prompted a kidney biopsy. Here's her kidney biopsy. This is a low power overview of her, uh, of one of the cores. You can see here the PAS uh, stained section and down here is the trichrome stained section. You see she has a background, you know, mild chronic changes, many, maybe 15 to 20% interstitial fibrosis. You see all this blue, this is all collagen basically uh, in the interstitium. Um, some of the tubules look mildly dilated and the glomeruli may be a little enlarged, maybe slight mesangial expansion, but otherwise at this magnification, at least you cannot really see much of anything. When you look at the tubular interstitial changes, uh, these dilated tubules often also have a flattened epithelium with some nuclear dropout um, and some vacuolization of the cytoplasm. And we see occasional mitoses and the PAS stain um, shows a loss, a diffuse loss of the proximal tubular brush, brush border. These are all features of um, acute tubular injury. And then here's the glomerulosa, one of them. 
Um, you see some mild mesangial expansion, but other than that, there's really nothing here. There's no hypercellularity. There are no, uh, you know, thickened basement membrane spikes or craters on the Jones silver stain. Um, so essentially a relatively normal looking uh, glomerulus with no apparent.